In this video I'm going to introduce the topic of acids and bases. So we'll start with the definition of an acid and a base. We'll then go on to what do we mean by strong and weak acids and bases. And then we'll finish with something known as conjugate acid-base pairs. So if we start by looking at this equation I've got on the board here, I've got a generic formula for an acid, HA. And what we're doing is we're putting this in water. And what's happening is the acid is donating its H plus ion. And if you look at the equation, where's that going? It's actually joined on with the water molecule and become this ion here, which is known as the hydronium ion. And what's left of the acid is this A minus ion here. So effectively, the acid is donating its H plus to water. Now another name for the H plus ion is the proton, and so we call acids proton donors. So there's the definition in orange there, and this is known as the Bronsted-Lowry definition. There are other definitions of acids and bases, but we are going to use this one for the A-level exam. Underneath, I've just got a very simplified version of this equation here. So I've taken H2O out and just put water in. And you can see that the HA, the acid, is donating its H plus ion, its proton. And it's left with the A minus ion as well. So if we move over to bases now. Bases are the chemical opposites of acids. So if an acid is a proton donor, a base is going to be a proton acceptor. And so you can see in this equation, the base is accepting an H plus ion from the water. So it becomes this species here, the BH plus ion. And we're left over with an OH minus ion as well, a hydroxide ion. So there's the bronsted lowry definition of the base. It's a proton acceptor, and this time I've gone for an actual example. So we've got aqueous ammonia. So when that's put into water, it's actually an equilibrium that's established. And what's happening, the ammonia accepts a proton from the water molecule and becomes the ammonium ion, and we've got a hydroxide ion as well. So we'll move into what we mean by strong and weak when we're looking at acids and bases now. We'll start with acids. We've got two acids, HA, so I'm just calling them HA to keep things the same. They're both at the same concentration, so 0.1 moles per decimeter cubed each. But you'll notice a subtle difference in the equations and it's obviously here. This acid here is in equilibrium with the particles on the right, whereas this reaction here is one directional. So what does that actually mean? What the single arrow means is this acid here completely dissociates, completely splits up into its ions. So if you think about H plus and A minus within there, they will completely break apart from each other. The H plus will go onto the water molecule and the A minus will be left by itself. Now it is over there. So this is what we call complete dissociation. And this is what strong acids do. They fully dissociate. If we look at the second acid, remember it's the same concentration, but because we've got these reversible arrows here, what that's telling us is the acid is not fully dissociated because when these particles form, they can react with each other and go back this way. So this HA molecule, this acid, is not fully splitting up. It's only partially dissociated. So this is a weak acid. Now, as we move further and further into the topic of acids and bases, 
you're going to appreciate just how important this ion is here, this H3O plus ion. It's the full formula for the aqueous H plus ion. And the, the strength of the acid is governed by the concentration of this ion here. So if we look at the first example, remember this is the strong acid. We started out with a concentration of 0 0.1 moles per decimeter cubed. So because this is a one to one ratio here, the concentration, once the reaction is taking place, of this will also be 0 0.1 moles per decimeter cubed. If we look at the weak acid now, remember this is only partially dissociated and so therefore not all of this is split up and so therefore the concentration of the H3O plus ion or H plus aqueous ion will be a lot less than this 0 0.1. So you can see I've written significantly less than 0 0.1 moles per decimeter cubed here. So this is much weaker than this one. Even though their starting concentrations are the same. So you can see at the bottom there, the strength of the acid is determined by the concentration of the H3O plus aqueous also known as the H plus aqueous ion. When it comes to the bases, I'm again going to use some specific examples. So I've got sodium hydroxide, which is um, a classic example of a strong base. It's fully dissociated, so when you put it into water, an aqueous solution, it will completely dissociate into its ions. And so therefore, we're going to end up with a high concentration of hydroxide ions. Ammonia, when you put that in water, we've already seen this, we've got an equilibrium established, so we've only got partial dissociation, and therefore we're going to have a much lower hydroxide ion concentration. Now at this point I want to be careful not to confuse people with too much information. What you'll see in a future video is how the hydroxide ion concentration and the H plus or H3O plus concentration are linked together. It's known as the ionic product of water or KW. But just for the purpose of this introductory video, if we have a high concentration of hydroxide ions, that means we have a low concentration of H plus or H3O plus ions. And of course, that's going to give us the high pH that we associate with strong bases. So strong base, high OH minus concentration means low H3O plus or H plus concentration and therefore high pH. A weak base would have a lower OH minus concentration and therefore a higher H3O plus H plus concentration and a slightly lower pH. So we'll finish the video with this concept of conjugate acid-base pairs. So if we look at the equilibrium I've got on the board now, it's actually an acid-base equilibrium, although you mightn't think of it as that because it's just the generic weak acid in water. But if we have a look at what each particle or species is doing in the equilibrium, hopefully you'll be able to see that it is an acid-base equilibrium. So if we start by looking at HA, we've got the HA molecule donating its proton and becoming A minus. So this is obviously acting as an acid. Now when it donates its proton, it becomes this A minus ion. Now if we think about what A minus ions can do, remember this is an equilibrium, so it can go back this way. So if the A minus ion accepts a proton from the H3O plus ion, it can reform HA. So this is actually a base. And because these are sort of interlinked by this proton transfer, this is one of the acid-base pairs in this equilibrium. Now, because in the exam you wouldn't be allowed to use red pen, it's always got to be black. Um, you can see I've written ones next to these now, just to signify that these are linked together. 
So you could call this acid one, and this is base one. If we look at the remaining two species in the equilibrium, so we've got a water molecule and an H3O plus ion. So what's the water molecule doing? Well, it's accepting a proton from this and becoming this ion here. So this is actually a base, so I've gone to blue now. And when it accepts a proton, it becomes this. Can this donate a proton? Yes, it can. It becomes that. So this is an acid. So we've used the ones, so we better call this base 2, acid 2. So we'll finish with this acid base equilibrium here. Again, you might be looking at that thinking that's not an acid base equilibrium because that's sulfuric acid and that's nitric acid. But as you'll see, one of these acids is actually acting as a base. So if we start with sulfuric acid, H2SO4, let's just have a look at what that's doing. It's going from H2SO4 to HSO4 minus. So it's losing or donating a proton. So this is obviously acting as an acid. We'll call it acid one. And this is the particle that it becomes. So this is this must be base one. We'll just check that in a second. Can that accept a proton and become that? Yes, it can. So this is the conjugate base. So the nitric acid, this must be acting as a base. We've already identified the acid on the left-hand side. So is this accepting a proton? Yes, it is, because it's going from HNO3 to H2NO3+. Plus. So this would be base, but it is 2 now. So this must be an acid. Let's check. H2NO3 plus going to HNO3. How would that happen? It would have to donate an H plus. So yes, it's an acid. So that must be acid 2. So what's that telling us about sulfuric acid versus nitric acid? Well, if this is the particle that's acting as an acid, it must be a stronger acid than the nitric acid. It's basically do forcing its proton onto this. So it will donate its proton in preference to this one.